Miniature Realms is proudly sponsored by Income Gaming, Cheltenham's premier friendly local game store. Check the link in the description. Soon as you open the brand new Warhammer the Old World rulebook, you're treated to some beautiful battle scenes very reminiscent of Warhammer of old. In fact, the old school aesthetic has been present for a little while for all their marketing in 2023 and all of the Almanac articles. We saw these classic looking green tables and railway style trees with a few smatterings of old Warhammer plastic terrain. These images are filled throughout the rule book and the forces books. And then also in the terrain section of the rule book itself, you can see some beautiful examples of Bretonian and Kemri terrain as well. And this is the Empire terrain, very, very similar to the Bretonian terrain. And this is what attracted me and led me to make this video. Welcome to Miniature Realms, my name's Stuart. In this video, I will talk through how I make my own classic style Warhammer terrain. So first off, let's start with the green base. I wanted to go for something a little bit more classic looking rather than a neoprene mat, as nice as they are. Now this is ready grass, spring colored from Woodland Scenics. And this stuff has a plastic backing on it. So you can work on top of it and it doesn't warp and it's much stronger than the paper style railway bases you can get. Now this is 50 by 100 inches, so bigger than a six by four board. And we will have lots of extras left over, which is good because we're gonna be using those later in the video. And you may have seen me using this stuff already if you've watched my Mordheim terrain build. So here we go again with it. The first job was to cut it down to size and I did it on my gaming table. Now, I'd have loved to have put it out on a flat floor somewhere and cut it with a large steel rule and a knife. Unfortunately, I don't have a large enough steel rule and I don't have large enough floor that I can cut into without cutting through some laminate floor or some carpet and making my wife very unhappy. So I measured up on my 6x4 itself, put a bit of a crease down and then just cut using scissors. So you get quite a lot of spare. I've used this stuff before to make two 4x4 mats out of. Um, for events, it's a very, very cheap way of doing it. At £45, you can get two 4x4 mats. So if you're running events that require 4x4s, it's a good hit to look up this stuff. But anyway, we'll put this away for now. We'll come back to it later. Now, if you've seen that Mordheim terrain build, which I mentioned before, you'll have seen me doing this. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to be airbrushing some, what is essentially, inks onto the mat itself. Now I'm using contrast style paints. In this case, I'm using Army Painter Speed Paints. I'm using a mixture of two browns. It really doesn't matter what you want is a, is a dark brown. So if you use the Citadel colors, something like Saigor Brown would do. You can use Garagat So It really, really doesn't matter too much as long as you're consistent throughout the build. All I'm doing here is just putting it in, in certain areas. It looks pretty messy to start with, but I just want to add a little bit of multi-texture. Now in the, the images I showed you at the beginning from the rule book they are super super clean and flat and i like that to a point but i do want this to make it a little bit more down and dirty you don't have to do this stage you could skip this stage if you wanted to but let's have a go and it'll take me a little while to do the whole mat so i'll speed it up as we go now, from the point of cutting this mat down and actually starting this project, it's been a couple of months and I've left this on my mat and I have all kinds of things stored on it during that time. And I've got a few little dinks and things in it. So I'm concentrating the, the paint over those areas and I'll be adding some texture paint afterwards as well. But again, as you can see, I'm just building up some little areas just to look like a little bit of mud or texture coming through. Now I'm using a bit of cardboard around the edge of the mat so I don't overspray onto my carpet and I'm being extra careful when I get close to the walls. The last thing I want to do is spray my nice white wall there brown as well. Again, another thing that would make the wife pretty unhappy. Once that's all done, it's time to add a little bit of texture paint and I'm using Diorama FX from Vallejo. This is earth texture and it's dark earth. Now earth texture is a bit like sterling mud from Games Workshop, just you get a massive pot of it for relatively a lot cheaper. I think it's about 12, 13 pounds for a, for a big old tub of 200 mils of any it goes for, for ages and ages and I use this on all my bases. Now I'm trying to be a little bit sensible here, not put it on too thick. Is if I ever want to roll this mat up, it's going to crack and peel off. So I'm trying to be a little bit sensible as I go. 
Now, in addition to that earth texture, I'm using some of their thick mud, which is a slightly different effect. This stuff dries a little bit more translucent and is a more of a diorama effect rather than something you could cover a whole base with. So this is European mud, which is a slightly different color brown. And I'm putting this mostly over where I've already put the earth texture down, but a little bit around it as well. And again, it's just building up that multi-layered color and multi-layered effect to make it a little, little bit more realistic. And then sparingly, I'm also using a little bit of industrial mud, which is the same as the European mud in terms of the type of effect it is, but it's got a little gray elements to it as well. And again, I'm just feathering out so that it's not too rough splotches and work my way around the board, mostly concentrating where I've done the airbrushing. And there we have the finished effects. We just added a little bit of color and interesting texture to the board. So it's not quite as clean and as shiny as the examples inside the rule book, but you've still got enough of that old hammer feel to it to keep me happy. Miniature Realms is proudly sponsored by Baron of Dice, premium wargaming dice. Over 500 styles, over 4,000 customer reviews. Welcome to the best dice on the planet. So I've been keeping an eye on the rule book as I'm going through these, making sure the examples of the terrain I make fit with the new rules. And first up, we're going to tackle some hills. The Games Workshop have made a number of different hills over the years, different plastic formed ones. And of course, there's loads of third party ones out there as well. Now, I've got a couple of these old citadel scenery hills, these old foam, hard foam polystyrene hills. And I've had them for a while. I've got two large ones and two small ones. And you can see I've already started to repaint them a little bit. And I've used a similar method beforehand. Now, if I hadn't done it months back, I would have saved it for the video. But the, the airbrushing side of things is exactly the same as you saw on the mat. And what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to tie it in with the mat even more by bringing over the same texture paints and using the same methods. Once you've gone around and done all of the same stuff that you have on the mat, it will blend in really, really nicely and make it look like one cohesive piece of terrain. And you can see here, I'm just placing it on the mat to make sure that the theory has, has met the reality. And I think it has. I think those hills seem to blend in really, really nicely with the mat itself. There's a slight difference in green between the mat and the hills, obviously made by different manufacturers, but I think it works pretty well. So this is my big box of trees, and most of them are the classic railway style trees rather than the newer plastic ones that Citadel came out with afterwards. And these will match perfectly the look that we saw inside those rule books. So a quick check of the rules for woods and nothing has really changed. It recommends that you have a boundary lining. It's very important to know the edge of the woods. So we need to do something more than just whack those trees straight on the mat. This is where the cut off spring green woodland scenics mat comes from. So that spare we had, we're gonna put it to use now. And I'm gonna cut this into the shape of the wood base. Now the standard way of doing this in years gone by would be to cut some MDF or some hardboard and it's definitely the most hard wearing way of doing it. You can even buy them pre-cut now on eBay as well. In fact, I've got quite a few, but then you have to paint them and texture them and flock them and I want them to match the mat. So I'm gonna be using this stuff. And because I'm only using it at home and I'll be storing it carefully, I think that these will be hard enough wearing and I can store them flat so it's not a problem there. So now we have our shapes cut out in regular sizes, perfect for the sort of size wood we need. It's time to start painting them. And I'm using again, surprise, surprise, the same technique. So I've got my airbrush out and going around with the dark brown, pick the brown of your choice as long as it matches the color that you're using on the mat. It really doesn't matter. I tend to use, as I said earlier, contrast style paints. In this case, it's army painter ones, but you can use camp contrast from Citadel as well, or even you can use express color from Vallejo. It really, really doesn't matter or even some brown inks or something as well. They would all do the job. If it's inks, you might want to just thin it slightly with water. But you can see here, I've just gone around the edge to make it blend into the mat and cover some of the white up and then just take that inside a little bit as well. I want it to be quite dark. The trees are going to be covering a lot of the ground. It's just going to create shadows and things. And it just helps it stand out on the mat itself. So there's a definition, but also blend in nicely. And yes, you've guessed it, the next stage is to come in with those texture paints again and splot them all over to create the same effects that you have on the mat as a whole. As you build up the layers, it really, really starts to come to effect and it's really, really simple and really, really quick to do. I was a little bit heavier here with a lighter gray industrial mud. Again, just wanting it to stand out a little bit more from the rest of the board, just give that slight little bit of difference as it's a wood base. 
Like before, it's time to throw some down on the table. Wait till they're dry or they'll stick to the table. You can see how easy they are, but they're really robust and so easy to just store on the top of the box of trees with the lid on top, so keep them flat or right at the bottom. Either way, they flop down really, really easy, and then you just plonk your trees on top afterwards. Two, three, four on a mat, and you can move the trees around as units enter. You can even just remove all the trees if you need to to make it easier in game. So next up, we need some impassable terrain. You could be rocky outcrops or something like that, but I'm gonna be using buildings. Now I'm opening up my box of buildings and a lot of my collection I've built recently for more time. And these are my late town houses from the Games Workshop Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game range, but they're perfect for Warhammer. A quick look at the guideline for the amount of terrain you need will suggest that you need one piece of terrain every 12 inches of table edge. So you're really looking at six pieces of terrain on a six by four board, which doesn't seem like an awful lot, but there aren't ways around it. And it does have some guidelines on sizes. So here is a basic setup. You can obviously move things around as you wish. I've decided to go for one way Lake Town building here and then a classic chapel. But I've added a couple of bits of linear terrain as well. And then I've added single trees on our own and under two inch pieces of terrain in Warhammer. The old world just count as table decoration. Battlefield decoration is a really useful way of just filling in those gaps. And like I said, if it's under two inches, it doesn't really have any effect on the game. And you can move it out of the way if you need to as well. But it helps fill in those gaps. And you can see my castle there on the on the back wall. And again, that's not really taking up much table space. So it just makes it look a little bit fuller. You can remove it if you need to. So even with slightly more than six on there, there's probably six pieces of terrain that are actually having an effect on the game. Now the video has barely scratched the surface of the terrain rules and it wasn't really supposed to be a review of the terrain rules but just to tie in some of the guidelines in with what I was building at the time and some of the special terrain rules look really interesting. In the most part this video was about working on the terrain itself and how I could create something similar to those classic shots in the rule book itself and the old hammer style that you saw in the back of white dwarfs for many many years but it also ticked the box of a few requests I've had for how I created the the mat for my Mordheim board and to do more of a generic looking map for war games terrain and I think the mini tutorial of that in this video covers that nicely so hopefully those of you who have asked for that are happy with how I've shown you. I also wanted to complete this project now so I was ready to start playing some games of old world. I've been doing lots of historical wargaming in the few years leading up to this so I had lots of the trees and things but things like the wood bases were really really needed and I just haven't needed them for ages with any of the games I'm playing and refreshing those hills and touching up that mat and making it look more Warhammer was something I really wanted to do and I got a good base to work from now. With all my woods and hills and buildings sorted, I think the next stage is a few more natural things. So I want to build some rocky outcrops and maybe some streams and rivers and look at that kind of terrain. And maybe I'll come back with a follow up video for that if people are interested. But thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Do you game at home? What's your terrain collection like? Are you hoping that Games Workshop re-releases a lot of the old fantasy terrain that was around towards 8th edition? I really love some of those plastic buildings and some of those kits. I'm hoping that they will come back later on this year or maybe next year. If you'd like to discuss the video or the terrain or painting or any of that in more detail, hop over onto the channel's Discord. There's some really, really friendly discussion that goes in there. Any games, fair game. Any painting questions, just really, really fun and relaxed place to go and chat hobby. There's also the monthly hobby pledge, which I'm running in there as well, which helps people get through their pile of plastic shame. I also have a Patreon, which is a great way of supporting the channel, but just liking this video and commenting and subscribing as well is a great way to help, and I'm very much appreciated of any support, and thank you to all my existing patrons. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you soon.